Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Verantis Fan Installation Maintenance Startup and Monitoring uh, Webinar. Uh, thank you for joining us here today. We're excited to be able to offer this. Um, wanted to take just a minute here to give you a little intro on the webinar platform that we are using. There's a couple of interesting little uh, things that are that you can use and take a look at. But if you notice, the actual screen that you have has several windows open, one of the windows being where the slides are that you will see the presentation. Another one is your media player, which is basically how you are going to hear your sound here today. There's a Q&A area where you can ask your questions. And then there's also an area uh, that has basically the resource list. The resource list has a lot of brochures, some of the startup and checklists that we're going to be talking about today. There's actually a link there that will take you to other webinars that we have available on demand. And finally, there's actually going to be the actual uh, slides for this webinar as well. So you can actually print them out at a later date. All of these are going to be available to you after the webinar as well. Uh, this will be recorded and can be uh, accessed at any time afterward with basically the same link that you use to get on to the uh, webinar today. So it's actually going to be live for uh, a year, and then after that we'll actually archive it and have it available for you as well. So you can come back and download any of these resources at any point in time. Along the bottom you're going to notice some icons, and they're called widgets. The first widget is uh, your media player icon. And basically, if for some reason you should accidentally close out of your media player, you can actually click on the icon and expand it back out again. The next one is the Q&A button. Uh, you can open that and close that as well, but you can ask, uh, ask questions at, at any point during the presentation, and we will try to answer them as we can. If we don't answer them immediately, we'll definitely do them by the end. The next widget is your slides widget. So if for some reason that should accidentally get closed down, you'll be able to pull it right back up. After that one is help. If you're having any problems at any point in time, you can click on that and there's some resources to help you out. There is a share icon after that. That's the little green one. At any point in time, if you want to share this on any of your social media, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, that would, would be great and you're able to do that through uh, that icon. The next one is the resources widget, and again, that's already expanded for you, but if you want to close that out, uh, you're more than welcome to, and you can actually open it back up again later. Next one after that is our survey, which we would be very grateful to you for filling out. You can fill it out um, at any point in time during the presentation, or you can also wait until the end. It will be available at all times. After that is the link to the Verantis website. Feel free to go on over to our website at any point in time if you'd like to check out additional information. And then finally, uh, if you want to, you can also open up Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. Uh, you can log in to your own accounts, and basically your, your news feeds will um, rotate for you as well uh, right on the actual application itself. So kind of neat, and hopefully you'll enjoy this here today. Our two presenters today will be Sherry Liu, who is our Director of Engineering, and also Junior Hardman, who is our Plant Manager. And they're going to go through each of these. And again, like I said before, if uh, you have any questions, please do uh, ask at any point in time, and we will try to answer them as we go along. Before I turn it over, we are going to start off with a poll here. How often do you perform routine maintenance or i.e. plant shutdown? Annually, semi-annually, quarterly, five or more times a year, or only when it breaks? We'll wait here a second for everybody to answer the question, and then we'll take a look at the results. Okay, let's see what our results are. 33% pretty evenly split, kind of interesting. 33% doing annually, 33% doing five or more times a year, and 33% that are doing it um, only when it breaks. Okay, 
We're going to start our presentation here with Sherry, and I'm going to pass this on over to her. Hello, everyone. This is Sherry Liu. Um, from this page, you will see um, an overview of what we're going to introduce with the major topics uh, that me and Junior, Junior and myself will cover. Um, from the pictures on the right, you will see him standing in the picture right next to the fan, taking the reading of the vibration level of our fan bearing. That's a recent picture of Junior, too. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> To start, we'll have a real quick overview of fan components and major accessories. We'll walk you through on the major steps in regards to how you're going to need to inspect the fans at the receiving and how you're supposed to handle and store the fans. After that, we're going to introduce uh, how to install, start up, monitor, and maintain the fans. Here is um, a couple of most typical arrangements of the fans that we supply. Uh, from the, the lower two sections, that arrangement 9 and arrangement 10, are most of our standard fans. Most of the small fans will be in arrangement 10, and the big, medium and bigger fans will be in arrangement 9. In special cases, when we require a really large horsepower motor, we will also use arrangement 1E, which is the upper one. Uh, arrangement. In the middle, there are arrangement 4 and arrangement 8. They are direct drive compared to the other three, which are belt driven. Um, for the direct drive fans, arrangement 4, impeller is going to be, be cut together with directly to the motor, while on the other hand, arrangement 8 will require the coupling for motor to com connect it to fan shaft, and then the fan shaft is going to be connected to the impeller. You have to make special notes for the selection of arrangement 4 or arrangement 8 because you will either need a VFD to control the motor um, or you will have to make sure the fan speed is going to be the same as the motor synchronous speed. Here is basically an exploded view of fan components and we're going to view it from the right which is going to be the housing with flange rectangular outlet and a and flanged inlet, which we also call it a uh, plain inlet. You also see the access door being separated. It is a, an option of our fan housing, but we strongly recommend you to select the access door when you select the fan because that's going to help you a lot when you inspect and maintain the fans. Uh, next to the housing, that's the impeller. Um, upper in the middle line, middle line from the right, that's the back plate, which is going to be folded over to the housing, and the seal plate, which is going to be helping um, sealing the fan. In the middle, that's the fan base of arrangement, eight, uh, arrangement 10, and the motor is going to be sit inside the base, and uh, the canopy on the upper left it's going to be a one-piece canopy covering the shaft, the drive, and the motor. This is a view for arrangement 9. For most of the components, it's going to be very similar to arrangement 10, but there are a couple of differences with one being motor mounted on the side of the base, and it's going to be adjusted by a separate piece of adjustable, adjustable motor base. Also, with the guards, it's going to be a separate piece of shaft guard as well as belt guard. Um, with the belt guard, we will have stainless 304 stainless steel expanded metal being mounted on the face, which is going to be help for inspect and maintain the drive as well as help the ventilation. Here will be a couple of components together with the pictures, which is going to be helping you view it a little bit better. Um, the number one and number two are the flexible connectors, which are more like more like accessories, but we're going to put over here to emphasize it is really important for you to make sure that fan is going to be connected to the ductwork with flexible connectors because FRP fans are not supposed to support any external forces. Um, the number one is our sleeve, sleeve type inlet flex connectors, while on the other hand, the number two is flange type. 
Number three is the access door, which we recommend you to have, the, have it selected with the fan for ease of inspection. Uh, number four are the belt guard. Actually, you wouldn't see in the picture that's the number five showing the shaft guard. Um, five is the motor, and the number six is the overall housing. Number seven is for arrangement 10. It is the one-piece weather canopy that's covering shaft, drive, and motor. Uh, number eight is the drain. In our system, it is an option to select the drain. However, we strongly recommend everyone include a drain with the housing because um, it is easy for water to accumulate based on con uh, condensation, so the water will have no way to be uh, to escape out if you don't have the drain with the housing. Um, number nine is also the base for the arrangement 10. On the picture on the right, that's arrangement nine. It shows the outlet flange for the number 10, uh, and number 11 for the drive, it shows both belts and sheets. Number 12 is the shaft and bearing. Accessories. Um, again, we show flex connectors. You, you have seen it a couple of times that shows how important it is. Um, the inlet damper on the left, it is the inlet vent damper. Um, it is special purpose, and we don't recommend you, you, make, you mess it up with the one on the right, which is going to be a backdraft damper because inlet vent damper will help the air stream to flow into the fan, while on the other hand, the outlet damper, the backdraft damper, wouldn't help the air stream. So uh, we never ever want to put the backdraft damper at the fan inlet. Even if in certain cases you have to, you want to make sure that the backdraft damper is um, long way before the stream, before the air goes into the fan. Sherry, can you speak up a little bit? Okay. As much as you can. Okay. Here is another accessory point for acoustical treatment. Um, on the left, it is integral insulation for the housing. We manufacture it at the plant. And you will see it from the front and the back of the housing. Um, the picture on the right, that's, sun, uh, that's the sun blanket. Um, it is actually in separate pieces. Usually we'll ship it separate, with, uh, ship separate from the fan, and you can install it onto the fan housing. And you can see it from the picture that it also has a separate piece for the access door so that you don't have to take the whole piece off when you need to maintain the impeller and the inside of the housing. We also have the selection for sound enclosure. A lot of times it will be called out in wastewater treatment jobs. Uh, the sound enclosure will cover the whole piece of the fan housing, base, and the motor. Um, it is very useful if you want to control the sound level overall. Um, the last option that I showed over here is the outlet silencer. It will only reduce the sound power along the duct stream. So, um, you wouldn't actually be able to reduce the fan sound itself from the sound source. Sherry, we have a question here. I'm going to push up real fast so we can okay. take a look at it. Any experience with premature wear of solid belts on high RPM fans? Uh, on the banded belts, no, I don't think I, I haven't heard of any problems uh, with issues of premature wear. I think the biggest thing is proper tension and drive alignment. If you have a, another question, we'll throw out there real quickly. Does Verantis supply a fully designed engineer encloser structure? For the, if you are talking about the sound enclosure, actually we do supply, but actually we source it out. 
So when we source it out from the supplier, the supplier actually is going to give um, the whole package together with the calculation. Actually, this slide gives you the introduction of how to receive and inspect the fan. It is very important for you to to, uh, to inspect the fan immediately upon receipt and before any attempt is made to unload the fan from the shipment. Um, in regards to the inspection, basically it's going to start from visual. Um, the picture shows how the fan is going to be looked like when it leaves our plant. It shows that usually our fans will be well packed with plastic cover and will be created bolted down to the crate. So when you see the fans, if you see any damage from the corner, from the crate, or from the pa plastic packing, you want to make sure that certain, uh, certain inspection is going to be digged into to make sure that there isn't anything major happening. Um, you, you definitely want to take a look at all the corners, the guards, uh, the flanges of the housing, which are made of FRP. And you also want to check all the accessories just in case there are certain accessory, accessories still missing. Um, together with everything with the shipping, we ha with, it comes with a paper copy of the IOM menu. So you want to make sure that you can locate them, uh, keep it in a, in a visible place, and you want to actually read it immediately after you receive the fans. Please do not throw it away. And here is uh, Junior who is going to take over the sections after that for installation, start, start up, and um, maintenance. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Junior Hardman. I've been with Verantis 38 years. Uh, just give you a little background. Handling and storage. Fans should be lifted only by the base, mounting supports, or lifting holes only. You do not lift the fan by the housing, impeller, shaft, guards, motor, or motor bracket. You will damage some of the components if you do so. Storage requirement. Fans should be protected from the weather and stored in a protected, clean, dry, and warm area. Refer to the motor and bearing manual for further storage instructions. <clears throat> Handling and storage. Short-term storage, up to six months. Now, there's routine maintenance that needs to be completed once a month, and I will cover that on the next slide. But reinspect any protective devices. That would be your canopies, belt guards, shaft guards. Check for scratches to the overall external finish of the fan. You want to check all the bearings and motor lubrication. Rotate the impeller by hand to redistribute grease on the internal bearing parts. Uh, Long-term storage longer than six months. Perform routine maintenance once a month at one year of storage and every six months thereafter. Also check for condensation inside the motor by following the motor manufacturer's procedures. And run the motor for 15 minutes and re-lubricate if required. See the manufacturer's operations manual. Handling and storage. This is a sample of our storage instructions for short and long-term storage procedures for centrifugal fans. Fans should be protected from the weather and stored in a protected clean, dry, and warm area. For motor storage instructions, see storage preparation in the motor manual. One month of storage, reinspect units to ensure any protective devices used are functioning properly. Check for scratches to the finish which will allow rust or corrosion to form. Check that all bearings in the motor have been previously lubricated. You want to rotate the fan impeller six full rotations ending with the opposite side of the shaft facing upward. Two months of storage, you want to repeat step one. Up to six months of storage, repeat step 1A, rotate 
fan impeller, six full rotations once a month, ending with the opposite side of the shaft facing upward. The reason we're ha we recommend rotating the impeller and the shaft and bearings in the motor is to <clears throat> keep from developing flat spots in the bearing from setting for an extended period of time with the belt tension and the weight of the impellers on the bearings. Up to one year of storage. Repeat step 1A. <clears throat> Rotate the fan impeller six full rev rotations once a month, ending with the opposite side of the shaft facing upwards. Check the condensate inside the motor by following manufacturer's procedures. Energize the motor for 15 minutes and re-lubricate if required. See the manufacturer's operations manual. Each month after one year, repeat step one. Each six months after one year, repeat step four. Now this, this information, everything that's on this page is a little bit small, but it is available as a PDF in the resources section, so you can actually have this print out and refer to again later on. I think we're at another poll here. So, have you ever installed a fan or supervised the installation of one? We'll give it a couple seconds here for everybody to answer and then we will move on to uh, the installation portion of the webinar. Okay, just a minute for everybody to finish up. And let's see what our results are. Great, we have 100% at uh, installing, so that's excellent. Let's see if we can uh, give you some additional tips here, starting with the installation portion. So back to, I believe, Junior. In this section, we're gonna cover fan inspection, duct connections, electrical connection, bearing lubrication, shiv alignment, and belt tension. On this page is also a fan installation checklist. And basically, it wants to make sure the fan is properly anchored. All shipping media has been removed. Are there any visible damages to the fan? The safety guards, belt guard, shaft guard, or canopy in place. Check the fan base for twists or misalignment. Check all bolts and nuts for tightness the fan back plate, access door, motor base, fan base to housing, bearing mounting bolts, set screws on the bearing lock collars, motor and fan shivs. The uh, bolts or screws on the taper lock bushing attaching the impeller to the shaft. You want to make sure the impeller is rotating freely by hand. The duct connections are self-supported and independent of the fan. Again, that's where your flexible connectors come in on the inlet and outlet. Your drain properly uh, piped and, and trapped. Shivs properly aligned. Motor wired in, accord in accordance with the motor cover wiring diagrams. You have a disconnect switch for the fan motor. All debris is removed from the duct and fan housing. Motor and bearings lubricated, proper tension on the belts, motor windings dry, bump the fan motor and uh, to verify the rotation is correct. Also take voltage, RPM, stack pressure and amperage readings. Fan inspection, check damage from shipment, storage and or handling. Again, make sure the fan base is not twisted or misaligned. Uh, I went on a service call a few years ago where once the fan was installed, the impeller was binding and would not rotate. So I went on site. The first thing I did was loosen the mounting bolts, and lo and behold, the base sprung back up into place. When it came back up into place, the fan, uh, impeller would rotate freely. So we had to shim under the anchor bolts or under the base uh, at the anchor bolts and then retighten it. So that, that solved the problem. So again, you got to make sure you either shim or grout the fan in place. You don't just anchor it and crank down the bolts. Uh, check all nuts and bolts uh, for tightness and the impeller rotates freely. 
Uh, the rest of this we've already went over. <clears throat> duck connections. Duck worker stacks should be self-supporting and independent of the fan by flexible connectors. And the system is connected uh, to ensure proper system resistance for airflow and static pressure. Electrical connections or motor wiring is wired per the diagram on the motor nameplate or the junction box cover. And also make sure you have a motor disconnect switch. Junior, isn't it uh, kind of common for sometimes the electrical to not be connected properly and it ends up messing up the rotation? Is that correct? Yes, Mary, that, that is correct. Uh, we've had complaints that the fan wasn't performing, and when we have them check the proper rotation, uh, then the fan is properly performing. Unfortunately, we had made a mistake a couple times, and the rotation error was on the, the fan incorrectly. So, you know, sometimes we're at fault, but, but not always. Installation, fan bearing lubrication. Uh, the fan bearings are lubricated with an NLGI number two lithium based grease. Bearing surface temperature between 40F and 180F. Uh, some of the examples of, of lubricant that could be used in the bearings is BP Oil, EP2, Mobile, Ronax MP, or Shell Gaddis S2B220. And bearing failure caused by lack of lubrication. The arrow is pointing to the bearing housing and the bearing insert itself on the right. Uh, I was at a job site recently where the customer had complained of high vibration levels. It was tripping out uh, on a monitor vibration sensors. And they had us come out and change the bearings. Well, when I disassembled the bearings, in the top picture, you can see the rust and the pitting that's in the inside of the bearing housing itself. The lower photo shows the bearing, but there's also very minimal grease. This fan had ran about 18 months, and it was not properly maintained. I think that's the biggest issue. Uh, one of the problems also was the fan did not run 24-7. In the winter time, they shut the fan down, so you get temperature swings. It's cold, it's warm, it's cold. You're getting condensation uh, forming inside the bearing, and also with the lack of lubrication, the rust and pits were forming. On this particular fan, the vibration level was at 0 0.5 inches per second, and after the bearings were changed out, it went down to 0 0.2 inches per second which is well within the AMCA 204 allowable for a BV3 flexible mounted unit. Motor bearing lubrication. Polyrex EM is a polyurea based grease or as stated on the motor nameplate. Uh, always verify the proper grease for the motors. Bearing lubrication, do not mix lubricants with different base types. The fo top photo on the right shows a bearing from a job site that uh, had failed. And when I went out to do the change out, the fan was under warranty. When I went out to do the bearing change out and talking with the maintenance folks on site, they were using polyurea based grease in all of their bearings. So they had several bearing failures per their maintenance personnel. This bearing was sent back into the bearing manufacturer for an evaluation, and it was also came back that it was incompatible lubricants, which means they mixed the lithium-based grease with the polyurea base, which caused it to lose its lubricating properties, therefore the bearing failure. You don't want to over-lubricate bearings. If you have excess grease in the bearing, it can cause the, bear, the bearing to run very hot. And if that's the case, it would be necessary to remove the grease fitting to per, uh, permit the excess grease to purge out of the bearing. We have a question here. We might be covering this later, but let's push this up just in case. Should 
the bearings be lubricated, lubricated again before it is started by a field service tech? Uh, it's all going to depend on how long the fan has sat. If we ship you the fan and you put it in the service within a couple, three weeks, no. At that point, you should not have to relubricate, but you will need to follow the bearing manufacturer's relubrication schedule. Installation, shiv alignment and belt tension. You need to always recheck your shiv alignment when the fans arrive on site. Uh, your vertical angularity, the offset, horizontal angularity is just some of the misalignments. <clears throat> on shiv alignment, uh, you can use a straight edge or a piece of string to uh, check the alignment of the shivs, or you can use a laser alignment tool, which works very, very well. Belt tension would be on the next page. You want to check your belt tension with a tensioning gauge and adjust using the motor slide base, whether it would be an arrangement 10 fan with the adjustable base mounted inside the base. There's still slots there that allows the motor to raise vertically or lower. And then the arrangement nines have an actual adjustable motor base with jack bolts on it. New belts generally require higher tension levels than used belts because they have not been run in. And I know the, bearing, or the belt manufacturer will tell you belts do not stretch, they wear in. Believe me, they stretch. I've been in this business too long. And check your tension frequently during the first 24 to 48 hours of running operation. Uh, in the diagram, if the belts are too tight on the slack side of the belt, it's going to run pretty well straight in a straight line. If you have a slight bow to the belt, that's optimal. If the belts are too loose, they're really going to be hanging low and you're going to end up with belt slippage and you're going to start seeing belt dust inside the guards. When that happens, you're wearing your belts out, they're going to prematurely fail, and you could also potentially be wearing out the shivs. Installation, axial fans, roof mounted. The, fan, or <clears throat> the blower you see to the right hand side at the top, that's uh, an FLR, which is an axial roof mounted fan and that fan is attached to a roof curb. This particular one has a uh, backdraft butterfly damper that also keeps the rain out of the duct or the building depending on the application. And again, you can see the canopy that covers the belts in the motor and the shivs. Leg supports. In the photo to the left toward the bottom, you'll notice the leg supports. Those are an option with our FL fans, which is our duct axials. They need to be called out if they're required. And if you notice, they're also suspended from a ceiling with tie rods. And again, you see the inlet and outlet flexible connectors and the duct work is self-supporting. <clears throat> Start up, prior to starting a fan, Inspect and confirm no debris is left inside the duct or fan housing. I've been on job sites doing startups. I pull the access door. I find concrete, nuts, bolts, washers, trash, you name it, I found it inside the fans. And also, if possible, walk the duct work if it's large enough and you have access to it. If anything goes through that fan, it could damage the fan. And if it's large enough, it could cause a catastrophic failure. You want to check all nuts and bolts. You want to check the drive and belt tension. You want to be sure all the guards are in place. Uh, dry the motor windings if, if they were stored in a damp area. Check the fan for proper rotation by momentarily starting the blower. Uh, and again, if the fan's running the wrong direction, you will not get proper airflow or static pressure. And we have a couple of questions. <clears throat> okay. 
fans that I have started seem to make noise when started and a few seconds the noise goes away. Is this common? It happens every time when starting. Well, I'm not sure what noise you're hearing. Uh, it could be the belts gripping the shivs, and that's just a noise because a lot of times they are a an X belt which has the teeth in them, and they will make like a, a, a noise uh, until they come up to RPM, and, and they're not actually uh, pulling real hard against them. One more question here. Do you recommend condition-based lubrication using ultrasound? Yes, do you know the alarms and decibels, or you're going to have to tell me. That I'm going to have to research and get back to somebody on, because I, I really don't know. I'll be honest. Okay, we'll get back to uh, our uh, person on that question. Okay, after startup, uh, you want to check your bearing temperatures. You may notice bearing temperatures are elevated initially. You see them upwards of around 200 degrees, 205. I don't get too concerned. When they start going up to 210, 215, then I, I'm worried about it. Uh, but after the fans run for a, a period of time, usually 12 to 24 hours, the bearings develop a wear pattern and they break in, uh, they will cool down. You want to check your fan RPM. You want to check motor voltage and amperage. And that's to make sure you, the motor is not overloaded, that you have your system properly balanced. You want to check all bolts and belt tension after one hour of running. And do not operate the fan if excessive noise or vibration is present. And I'm going to turn this over. Oh, we have a poll question. Do you have existing equipment to monitor temperature and vibration? Are you any are you using that right now on any of your your equipment? We'll give a give it a little bit of time here for you to answer. Let's take a look and see. Seventy percent are using some type of uh, equipment right now, and thirty percent uh, are not. So interesting. So we'll move on to our next topic that happens to be on monitoring. And we'll turn this over to Sherry Lou at this time. Vibration and temperature. Um, usually, high vibration level is a really common cause for fan failure, because as the fan runs over time, impeller vibration level will get worse, and it is usually caused by buildup and wear. Um, it is critical for people to monitor vibration level and make necessary actions to avoid any severe future failure. Um, for vibration level setup, it usually has two levels, one for alarm and one for shutdown. Um, it usually will be beneficial to monitor fan bearing or the vibration uh, or the motor vibration level. The pictures on the left is accelerometer. It's going to be sensing the vibration and send over the signals to the control panel. And the picture on the right shows a vibration switch with transducers, which is going to do the sensing as well as control. Um, Bearing temperature and motor temperature are a very important uh, indication. When the temperature goes high, it could be cause of a high vibration level, and it could also be cause of lack of lubrication. Also, we, because of FRP fan material, we also recommend you to install a temperature sensor at the interior of the fan housing, just in case there are something happening throughout the processing uh, system and cause a high temperature to cause failure of the fan. 
Um, usually for fan bearing or the housing, we can use RTD sensors and send all the signal to the control system. And for motor bearings, we can use thermostats, thermo thermistors, or RTD sensors. Motor disconnect switch is an, a, a very important item that we, we recommend every motor be equipped with at least one type of the disconnect, even if it's just a quick stop uh, stop button. Um, with most, uh, based on the application of the fans, there are different types of disconnect. Could be NEMA 3R, NEMA 4 or 4X for weatherproof, and NEMA 7 or 9 for explosion proof. We do have packages for fan, for fan monitoring, so if you have any required for the, um, the monitoring, please consult one of our sales or application engineer um, to make the selection for you. Barry, we have a question. I'm going to put it up to our slide. To recheck belt tension, do you use vibration analysis, or do you need to stop the equipment and check the tension of each belt once stopped? Typically, to check belt tension, you would need to shut the fan down. Uh, vibration levels can come from many things other than just belt tension. You could have buildup on the fan. You could have looseness in a fan bearing. Uh, so in order to do it properly, you would need to shut the fan down to verify belt tension. <clears throat> we have a, another poll here that we'll move to. If an aftermarket monitoring solution were available, would you be interested? See here, it looks like the poll question might not be showing. Maybe it is. There we go. Okay, give you a couple seconds and we'll take a look and see. Okay. Similar uh, answer as before 70% would be interested in the solution and about 30 wouldn't be. So. Uh, good to see. So we will move on here and continue with maintenance. Okay, we're going to go over routine maintenance, bearings, shivs and belts, <clears throat> motor and impeller. For routine maintenance, you want to make sure the main disconnect is switched and locked off. And lock out, tag out. Always lock out, tag out. Be, be safe. We don't want anyone hurt with the fan starting up uh, unexpectedly. Routine maintenance should be performed after a few hours of operation, after one day, after one week, after two weeks, and at least once a month thereafter. You want to check the impeller and hub connection. That's where the taper lock bushing attaches the impeller to the fan shaft. Your belt tension, set screw and bolt tightness, fan bearing lubrication, wear and overheating, impeller and housing build up or overheating. And with that, you're going to need an access door to be able to inspect the fan impeller uh, as well as the interior of the housing. You also want to look at the, the condition of the FRP. You want to look for any kind of cracks or crazing of the FRP. Bearing lubrication, here's just some sample tables shown. Uh, the top table is for ball bearings. Suggested lubrication period in weeks. If you're running 1501 to 2000 RPMs, you run eight hours a day. You need to re-lubricate every four weeks. If you're running 16 hours a day, it's every two weeks. 24 hours a day is once a week. 
and the bearing charts typically will tell you the amount of lubrication to add at each lubrication schedule. The sample of the bottom table shown there is, is a spherical roller bearings. Uh, if you're running 1500 RPMs, say a 3 and 7 16 shaft, that's the fourth one down. Uh, you would every 0.25 months, so it would be once a week. Now, Junior, I think that I've heard you mention before that it's uh, not necessarily uncommon that people will get the wrong bearings, and they might get, uh, instead of the rounded, they'll use the spherical, you know, so it's very important to make sure that you get the right bearing, correct? Oh, you mean for a replacement? Right. Absolutely. Uh, if the fans are shipped out and they have spherical bearings, do not take and replace it with a ball bearing. We do uh, bearing calculations and uh, service life calculations of the bearings on each blower before they're sent out. So if we send them out with a ball, don't put a spherical or vice versa. Okay. Here we have a quick question here. Let me throw this up to our <clears throat> side area. Are bonded belts preferred on multiple belt pulleys? I think a lot of times that, that's a, a preference. Uh, again, whether you're running single belts or what we call the banded belt, which is uh, multiple belts all attached, uh, they say you get a little better horsepower transfer with the banded. Um, problem is I've seen some issues trying to get them properly tensioned and aligned, but either belt would, would probably uh, suffice, again, Belt tension is very critical with the belts. Okay, we're going to bearing lubrication. <clears throat> uh, all bearings are supplied with extended grease fittings or applicable as Verantis manufacturing standards since June of 2013. Uh, on jobs with a canopy or a shaft guard, we typically have stainless steel extended lines to the exterior of the guard. On our axial fans, uh, the, the roof axial or the duct axial, they will be mounted uh, on the steel base with, with uh, tubing uh, near the nameplate. There'll be two Zerk fittings for the fan bearings. Uh, replacement bearings are available. Uh, you want to replace the bearing per the manufacturer's instructions. And if you have any questions, you know, contact Verantis. Uh, we, we're more than willing to help out whether you're, you're changing the ball bearing, spherical. Uh, we'll work, work with you uh, explaining how the best way is to change that bearing. Shiv, inspect your shivs for signs of wear or rust. Uh, if you've had a fan setting for a while that's outdoors or in a high humidity area that hasn't been running, you can potentially get rust on the shivs. You start to fan up and start running, that rust is going to start chewing on the belts, and over a period of time it could potentially cause premature belt wear. So you want to make sure all the, the, the grooves are smooth and uniform. Uh, the picture on the right is showing a person checking the grooves of a V-belt drive with a gauge. Uh, it's actually a shiv gauge and V-belt gauge. So using that you can tell if the shiv is worn or if your belts are worn. Okay, Junior, we have a question here. Let me uh, throw it up. If my equipment should run at least six months continuously in a plant, what should I do if I can't perform the routine tasks you listed monthly? Well, especially for the lubrication, uh, they make auto lubers, which you can buy and adjust that uh, gradually feed lubrication to the bearings over an extended period of time. 
your belt tension, uh, I guess, you know, if you, if you refer to one of the previous slides where we showed the belt tension with the belt too tight, with the belt too loose, with the belt just right with a slight uh, bow on the loose side of the belt, visually look at the belts, visually look at inside the screen, inside the belt guard to make sure there's no belt dusting or you don't hear belt slippage. Okay, check your maintenance. Again, check your V-belts for proper alignment and tension. You want to remove any buildup of four material from the, the shivs, especially if you've had one where the belts uh, have been slipping. A lot of times you'll get material build up in the bottom of the groove of the shiv. That needs to be removed. Uh, wipe it with a dry cloth. And uh, if the belts are worn, replace them as a set. Do not install one or two new belts and about four old belts uh, because the length is definitely going to be different in the belts and you just cause premature wear on the new belts. Uh, motors, you want to keep the motor clean and, and ventilations, the ventilation openings clear. Motor bearing lubrication per the motor manufacturer's instructions. And again, the, the lubrication, the type varies from motor to motor, manufacturer to manufacturer, whether they have ball bearings, whether they have spherical bearings. Uh, I've had a customer contact me uh, with some blowers we had shipped out that motor bearings were failing. And I said, That's, that doesn't make sense. We rarely have a motor bearing failure. And I questioned the type of lubrication and come to find out he was using the wrong grease. The, the particular motor uh, required polyurea based. He was using lithium, the same that they put in the fan bearings. I've seen it too many times, so please verify the proper grease for the motor before adding grease to it. Maintenance. <clears throat> Impeller, hub, and shaft seal. This basically just shows the uh, Teflon seal mounted on one of our on a fan. Uh, starting at the left hand side top, that's that's the Teflon seal, Teflon membrane. There's a backup plate on the out, very outside that's made of FRP. There's a machined FRP surface that's on the impeller hub that extends through the back cover or the back of the fan housing and the attachment is outside of the airstream. You can see the steel hub that's at it's encapsulated with the FRP. If you start at the top on the right, you'll see the bolts that are pulled through the housing itself, the back cover or the back of the housing that holds the seal and the plates in place. Again, that's all encapsulated with FRP. There's no exposed metal. And you'll see the steel hub itself, the steel back plate is encapsulated top and bottom with FRP. So again, it's just uh, as an FYI. Maintenance, impeller inspection, again, an access door is very critical for this portion of it. What we're showing here is a fan impeller that was subjected to high heat conditions. Uh, which were higher than the allowable for the resin that the, the, the impeller was made from. You can see the bowing and bending of the blades, the, where the blades are starting to warp and crack in the center. And also they would start tearing apart at the front ring joint and the back plate joint. Uh, main causes for this would be your process temperatures. You could have a block mesh pad or mesh eliminator in the duct system at some point, or you could potentially run the fans with the dampers closed. And I've seen this happen several times, so it, it will restrict the airflow. You won't have enough air running through the blower to keep it cool, and they will start to, to soften and grow. This slide shows some impeller 
build up on the impellers. Uh, in order to clean those, we and also with the build up, you know, if it remains uniform, it really doesn't seem to affect the balance that much. But when you have chunks coming off, then you're going to start seeing the imbalance. Your your uh, vibration levels are going to start climbing. At that point, you would need to clean the impeller. A lot of people will just use a brush and soap and water with a garden hose. Others use a power washer. I've used a power washer, but I remember I recommend a residential power washer, like 1,500 to 2,000 psi, versus the high pressure commercial of 3 to 4,000 psi. But no matter which one you try, you decide to use, if you're using a power washer, you do not hold the wand in any one place. You keep it moving. If you don't, you will blast the protective coating off of the impeller, therefore exposing glass fibers to chemicals, and chemical attack could potentially at some point cause a failure of the blower. Uh, again, your, your inspections, the one on the left is one that was caused by heat. Uh, as well as the bowing, you're going to see it start tearing at the corners. The one on the left is uh, abrasion and wear. Could potentially be water droplets, water going through the system to wear the protective coating off or particulate. And again, it exposes glass fibers uh, and makes it subject to chemical attack. Here's another one with an impeller inspection. Again, you can see the severe buildup on the impeller blades. You can also see, also see in the, well, actually right and left hand pictures both where some of the material had started coming off. Uh, what that does, that increases your vibration levels and you get to a certain point you're subjecting the impeller to stresses and forces that it was not meant to see. And it's just like, you know, fiberglass is no different than steel or anything else. You flex it enough over time, it will crack. Uh, can I change the speed of the fan at a later time? Well, the answer is yes and no. Uh, first of all, we need to find out what the performance would be, what the RPM required, and then find out what class of fan you have, whether you would exceed the maximum allowable speed of the fan. Uh, if the fan will stand the RPM, then the next thing you have to look at is your motor to make sure you have enough brake horsepower so you don't overload the motor. Hey, everybody, we're uh, reaching the end of our time here, but we want to open up to if there are any uh, additional questions that anybody has, please feel free to ask them now. Uh, you are also more than welcome to ask them, and we can get back to you at a later date if we can't answer them right now. Uh, we'll just wait here um, and see if there's any additional questions. I tried to answer a lot of them as we were going through, and there were a lot of really good questions there. So hopefully everybody got uh, a lot of information out of this. Okay, it looks like we're doing pretty good on the questions. But again, if anybody has any outside of this, feel free to contact us. There's uh, multiple ways to do that. You can contact us through the uh, bottom icon. Uh, you can always contact through the invitation that was sent to you originally, as well as go to our website. But um, as I mentioned before, uh, we do have, uh, this will be available as a recorded on demand right out. Later on this week, we'll typically take about a day or two for it to get to the point that it's uh, furbished and ready to go. Uh, so definitely, if you need to come back to any of this, come on back. The resources are always available, always available for download. And we're always available here at Barantis to uh, help you with your questions. So please feel free to contact us. And we thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.